dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Brenda Marshall in The Gold Digger and the Miner, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is your host, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and greetings from Hollywood. Welcome to your theater of stars, where famous names of the films and stage join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star in a command repeat performance before our microphone is lovely Brenda Marshall. Our action-packed drama is called The Gold Digger and the Miner. We'll have the curtain for Act One in just a moment, but first, here is Wendell Niles with a message of importance. Young man, be a volunteer. Your Army and your Air Force urgently need men right away. Take advantage of the many choices of jobs now open to volunteers. If you are single and between the ages of 18 and 34, enlist right away. Get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station today. Serve yourself and your country. Be a volunteer. And now, back to your host, C.P. McGregor. The curtain rises on Act One of The Gold Digger and the Miners, starring Brenda Marshall as Wanda Morgan. <laughs> the daughter of a famous mining engineer... Wanda Morgan decided as a little girl to follow in her father's footsteps. And Wanda has had cause for regretting the decision almost ever since making it. In State School of Mines, even though she led her class, Wanda was regarded as a lovely and talented freak. And since graduating, she's had no luck in combating the prejudice against feminine mining engineers. At the moment, she's in the private office of her employer and fiancé, Randolph Sherman, mining consultant, begging for a chance at some field work. Oh, but Randy, you know that I'm a better engineer than most of your field men. Oh, perhaps, but I'm not engaged to marry any of them, Wanda. Now, why don't you forget mining and set a date for our wedding? Because I don't intend to set that date until I've had at least one chance to prove professionally that I'm as good a mining engineer as my sheepskin says I am. Well, in that case, I'm afraid I'll spend the rest of my life being a bachelor. Why? Because, my dear, even you should know by now that you're not going to get that chance. Mines are run by men, and they're Maybe going... Maybe that's what's wrong with mining. Well, possibly. At any rate, men prefer their women scented with taboo rather than reeking of mine muck. And no man is going to take the responsibility of sending a woman underground where falling rock look, might... Look, look, housewives are hit by cars while shopping for their families, and men are willing to take the responsibility for their becoming housewives. No, that's different. Look, a broken bone's a broken bone, no matter how it's acquired. All right, all right, all right. Let's talk about something else. But I don't else, want to huh? talk about anything else. Now, look, for the last time, Randy, will you or won't you give me a chance at one field job? I won't. <sighs> Goodbye. Now, where are you going? Well, if I can't get a field job from you, I'll get one from someone else. Where will you get one? I don't know. I'll try the school employment office, or the mining companies, or the employment agency. Someone's going to give me a chance. Well, when you get tired of being turned down, remember that your old job and your future husband are still here. <laughs> I just have to have a chance to prove to myself as well as to everyone else that I'm a capable mining engineer. Well, I appreciate your attitude, Miss Morgan, and I respect you for it, but... The school it... has no calls for female mining engineers. I tried to warn you when you were an undergraduate. I know you did, Dean, but... I'll try some of the smaller mining companies. The big ones have already turned me down. Who ever heard of a woman mining engineer? Let a woman set foot in my mind, even as a visitor. My name's not for women. Uh, uh, judging from this application, Miss Morgan, 
You have a thorough knowledge of mining. Theoretically, I'm the world's greatest unemployed mining engineer. Well, I certainly hope that we can place you. I don't. I beg your pardon? <laughs> oh, it's nothing. I simply meant that I'm practically past hope. I'm just going through the motions. Well, am I to understand that you don't really want a job? Oh, I do. More than almost anything in the world. It's... Well, it's just that I'm nearly convinced that no one wants a woman mining engineer. Well, it uh, may take a little time. Mm, I know. And, and while you're waiting for a call, uh, would you be interested in uh, stenographic work? Mm-mm. Oh. Or um, door-to-door selling? <laughs> no, thanks. I didn't think you were. <laughs> but Lily and I always try, you know. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> oh, well, I'll be right with you, sir. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> you have my phone number. If anything turns up, let me know. Indeed, I will. Well, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> yeah, goodbye. Uh, oh, well, now. Uh, and what can I do for you, sir? Yeah, I'm looking for a mining engineer. Oh, well, we certainly can help you there. Uh, what did you want? A mining engineer. Oh, a mining engineer. <laughs> did you say mining engineer? Oh, uh, I thought you said mining. Uh, Miss Morgan. Miss Morgan. Uh, come back, yes? Miss Morgan. Come back. Yes? What's the Did I forget something? Uh, no, but I almost did. This man, this man, Miss Morgan, is this man. Yes? This man wants a mining engineer. Oh. oh, no. Oh, you don't? Sure I do. What's so unusual about oh. that? Well, um, I suppose... Well, no, nothing really, but you see, I'm, I'm a mining engineer. And you... A mining engineer? But certainly she is her application for the job. <laughs> right here. Now look at all the colleges she attended. Uh, well, I, uh, I'm not exactly looking for a, a mining engineer. I see. Uh, what I really need is a geologist. Well, I don't suppose you'd be interested by the fact that I led my class in geology at uh, State School of Mines. Well, actually, I expected to hire a man. And, and you wouldn't consider hiring a woman. I didn't say that, but... I have a partner who might not approve. Where is he? Out of the mine. <laughs> He's a prospect hole, really. We're not miners, just a couple of gold diggers. Well, why do you need a geologist, then? We've been working some high-grade stuff, and last week we lost the vein. I thought maybe a geologist could help us find it again. Well, I'd like a chance to try. Well... Oh, well, she's very competent, Mr... Uh, Mr... Reed. Bob Reed. I'm Wanda Morgan. And she's very, very competent, Mr. Reed. In all my years of handling job applicants, Miss Morgan is the finest miner ever to come to this office. Oh, oh not a miner. Oh, I didn't... Really? Yes. As a matter of fact, she's the only one. Oh, you were very lucky to find her. Uh, uh, what are you willing to pay? Well, that's the hitch. If, if we can't find the vein again, why... We're... I don't care about the money, Mr. Reed. Yeah, Miss Morgan, please. I'll take the job on a contingent basis. If I relocate the missing vein, you pay me. If I don't, you owe me nothing. Well, I certainly couldn't ask for a better deal than that. But I certainly could. Meanwhile, you supply my transportation to the mine and my subsistence while I'm there. It's a deal. Wonderful. When do you want me to start? Right now. I'll drive you to the mine tonight. Tonight? If you give me your address, I'll stop by and pick you up about 8 o'clock. That'll give you time to get your things together, and it's a lot more comfortable driving in the desert at night. Randy, I don't need your advice. Furthermore, I'm going to start on that job right away. I never heard of such a harebrained proposition, working for someone you don't even know on a contingent basis. Well, at least I'm working. I forbid you to take the job, Wanda, until I've investigated this man, Reed. I can hardly hear you, Randy. I said I forbid you to take the job until I've investigated this man, Reed. It's strange, but I can't hear you at all now, Randy. Wanda. Give my love to your mother. Wanda. Mr. Reed's waiting, Randy. I'll have to say goodbye. But I absolutely forbid your going. There must be something wrong with this line. Goodbye. Well, ready, Mr. Reed? Ready? <laughs> Who was that? The boyfriend? No, the last time I saw him, he was my fiance. I'm not so sure of our status right now. Oh. Well, let's go. Yes, let's, before I change my mind. Yes, it is. I can't understand your fiancé letting you go on a job like this. Well, he wasn't very enthusiastic about it. As a matter of fact, 
I'm not as enthusiastic about it as I was. Why? Well, Joe, my partner Joe Hatton, thought it was a silly idea to bring in a geologist in the first place. He may not be very polite when he finds out that I've brought a woman. Is he a woman hater? Well, not exactly. Oh, I see. Oh, I shouldn't have let you come out here on a contingent basis because Joe may not agree to it. Well, look, in that case, I'll thank you for the chance and forget about it, Mr. Reed. You are a gentleman, Miss Morgan. What's wrong? Yeah, I didn't have my mind on driving. Almost missed the turnoff. Oh. We leave the road here and cut off across country. Hang on and save your breath. There won't be much chance for talking. <laughs> I guess so. Say, it's getting light. Yep. And here's the mine, such as it is. Where? That shack. The ore dump behind it. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't look like much, does it? Well, if we can just sneak in without waking Joe, we'll be able to get a little sleep before the battle begins. Well, I managed to get some, but... Well, that last two or three thousand miles were pretty rough. <laughs> I know what you mean. That's why we make the trip at night. The motor would burn itself out in the sun. Well, come on. If we're quiet, maybe... Is that you, Bob? Yeah. Yeah, Joe. Uh, what kind of a trip was it? Not bad. Joe, this is Miss Morgan. Huh? Oh. Hello. My partner, Joe Hatton, Miss Morgan. How do you do, Mr. Hatton? Where's Bob been hiding you? Why, uh... I uh, just met Miss Morgan today, Joe. Mm -hmm. Past work. A lot more interesting than some silly geologist. Miss Morgan is a geologist, Joe. Well, you can tell that by looking at her. She's a what? I brought her out to find the vein. To try to find it, Mr. Hatton. We are not going to do it. I beg your pardon? Go right ahead. But you're not going to mess around that mine. Why not, Joe? Because we have enough work following our own leads in that vein without chasing some woman's intuition. How much did you pay her? Why, nothing as yet. She took the job on a contingent basis. And if I don't find the vein for you, Mr. Hatton, you owe me nothing. That case, lady, we owe you nothing. Because you're not even going to look for that vein. I'll drive you back to town myself. We pause briefly from our story, The Gold Digger and the Miners, starring Brenda Marshall, to bring you an important message from our government. Attention veterans. The U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force have a special message for you. Former servicemen with military occupational specialties in radio, radar, electronics, and other critical categories who are interested in returning to active duty on a regular or reserve status are urged to find out about the special enlistment opportunities now available. Get full details about these opportunities today at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. The curtain rises on Act Two of The Gold Digger and the Miner, starring Brenda Marshall as Wanda Morgan. Determined to prove that her education as a mining engineer had not been wasted, Wanda to fight her fiancé, Randy Sherman, and went looking for a field job. Then, when a young prospector, Bob Reed, gave her a chance and drove her out to a small desert mine, his partner, Joe Hatton, confronted Wanda with the same unreasonable masculine prejudice against feminine miners which had previously stymied her career. Desperately, Wanda is fighting back. We can't drive back before tonight anyway. Why not let me look at your prospect? And... We're driving back right now. But Mr. Reed said it wasn't possible to make it in the sun. Mr. Reed isn't going. Neither are you, Joe. Huh? If you do, you go alone. Now, just a second, Bob. I brought Miss Morgan out here, so I'm responsible for her safe return. And I won't let her make that trip during the day. The motor would burn out before you got halfway to town. Uh, I suppose you're right. You know I am. I'll drive her back tonight. Okay. Keep her away from that glory hole in the meantime. We'll talk about that later. Right now, Miss Morgan needs some rest. We well, can both rest. I'm going down the shaft to check a hutch. Well, 
Feel any better, Miss Morgan? Physically, yes, Mr. Reed. Why don't you call me Bob? Mr. Reed makes me feel stuffy. All right. Bob. And uh, may I call you Wanda? Certainly. Hey, um, is Mr. Hatton always as charming, or is he just putting himself out for me? <laughs> I don't know what to say. I warned you that he might not be very polite, but I didn't expect him to attempt to order you off the property. He was quite pleasant until you told him that I was a geologist. Yeah. Well, Joe's dad was an old-time beguessing by gosh prospector, and Joe resents the scientific approach. Oh, I see. Well, perhaps if Joe's father had known a little geology, Joe wouldn't have to be prospecting in the desert today. As a matter of fact, Joe's old man and his burrow struck it rich several times. What, threw it away on some boomtown binge? Huh? Oh, no, no. Joe's loaded. He's just out here helping me. Oh. Oh, then this is really your claim, and Mr. Hatton hasn't any right to keep me from inspecting it. As a matter of fact, my claim, the one Joe came out to help me develop, it joins this one down the hill. Joe traced some high-grade float up here and insisted that this was the place to sink the shaft. Well, in whose name is this claim registered? We registered both the claims jointly. As I said, Joe doesn't need the money, and I do. I see. How did you happen to lose the vein? I mean, did it, uh, did it just pinch out, or is the structure seriously faulted? <laughs> if I knew, I wouldn't have hired a geologist. Who's forbidden even to go near the mine simply because she's a woman. Well, Joe's marriage didn't work out. It made him pretty bitter. Hmm. Can you imagine what it did for the girl? It made her financially independent. But getting back to the lost vein, about ten days ago, Joe and I got a report from the essayer's office that was really sensational. Mm -hmm. So in your enthusiasm, you either put down too much hole or missed the dip. And when you fired the next shot, you lost the vein. Yes. Does geology teach you that? Well, it's happened before. Well... When Joe comes back, if his hunch didn't work out, I'm going to insist that he let you have a look. Well, hi, Joe. Uh, was your hunch any good? No. I thought maybe the outcrop would show me something, but it didn't. The country rocks granite, isn't it, Mr. Hatton? That's right. The ore was in a limestone bed adjacent to it. Well, as long as your hunch didn't work out... Do you mind if I take a look? Yes, I do. Oh. Well, she can't hurt anything, Joan. She might be able to see something we've missed. I've just been down there checking everything. If there's anything I missed, no female geologist will find it. I might surprise you. Yeah? Yes. You see, I'm beginning to have a hunch, too, Mr. Hatton. You sure it isn't female intuition? It isn't strong enough for that yet. But you're building it up by leaps and bounds. What are you driving at? Well, I think that for reasons best known to yourself, you're afraid to have me inspect the mine. Wanda, if you were a man, I'd clout you for that. Oh, you'd probably do it anyway if Bob weren't here. Oh, so it's Bob and Wanda now, eh? You wonder why they don't want women around mines. Relax, Joe. I brought Miss Morgan out here without checking with you. If you insist on her staying out of the mine, well, she'll stay out of the mine. Take her down. Let's see what woman's intuition can do in hard rock. Here, let me help you. Thanks. Well, well here we are. And, uh, Wanda, we're still riding the bucket. Oh? Yeah. Well, let me see. Uh, well, I'll uh, I'll let myself down first, and then haul it up for you. You you mean we have to go down the shaft in that ore bucket? Well, we're only down thirty feet. Well, it could still be a nasty fall. Well, you're the boss, but you can't expect a fee if you don't inspect the mine. I know. Well. All right, but they never said anything about this in school. <laughs> It's perfectly safe, as long as you stand in the center of the bucket. Like this. What? Well, here I go. That three-eighth-inch steel rope is strong enough to hold both of us. I can wait my turn. How are you doing? Oh, there's nothing to it. Oh. 
elevator coming up. How's it doing? Okay. All right, get in. And don't forget to stand in the center. All right. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Now don't move too much and hang on to the rope. Going down. Hey, this is fun. <laughs> Glad you finally think so. <laughs> Ground floor, all up. <laughs> well, what do you think of our elevator? Well, I don't think Mr. Otis has a thing to worry about. <laughs> you wanted to be a mining engineer, you know. I know. Well, where did you lose the thing? You're down the drift. Over here. May I use your light? Sure. Now, here's the limestone bed Mr. Hatton mentioned. This is the dip and... Where's the prospector's pick? Why... We always take the tools out. What do you see? Something that makes me think my feminine intuition, as Mr. Hatton called it, was right, Bob. What do you mean? Well, your vein of high-grade ore wasn't lost. It was covered over. What? Well, I can't actually see it because of this fake surface that's been put over it. Some sort of quick-hardening imitation rock. Where? Right here. Dig down. You'll find your vein again. Are you sure? I'll stake the reputation I'd like to make as a mining engineer on it. Oh, I wonder what Mr. Hatton will have to say when we confront him with this. We're not going to confront him with it. What? It's his claim. He discovered it. But it's... it's registered in your name, too. I know. But I don't want to say anything about it, Wanda. I'll pay your fee, though. I'll drive you back tonight. Come on. Let's go up on top. <laughs> Well, what'd you find? Exactly what... Nothing, worth. exactly nothing. Yeah, I knew you wouldn't. You're extremely clever, aren't you, Mr. Hatton? I've managed to make a living out of mining. Have you? I understood that you inherited your money. Some, but I've managed to pick up a little on my own. I can understand that. As long as you cheat only your friends. Wanda! What do you mean, cheat my friends? She doesn't mean anything, Joe. Keep out of this, Bob. You haven't answered my question, Miss Morgan. And she's not going to. Oh, yes, I am. I found your lost vein, Mr. Hatton. Found the way you'd covered it over... Bob! I told you not to mention what you'd found. Hey, what's going on here? Keep away from me, Joe. I've got a gun. Bob! Get away or I'll shoot. You'll have to, Bob. I'm going to find out what this is all about. <coughs> no, you don't. What the... Look out, Joe! Look out, Joe! How do you feel, Mr. Hatton? Wanda, Wanda. Oh, well, well, Randy. Oh, Wanda, darling. How in the world did you get here? I flew out with a man from the employment agency. In my excitement over actually getting someone a job, I forgot to have you execute this assignment of salary, Miss Morgan. Now, if you just sign here. Uh, that can wait. Oh, huh? no, it can't. I've dealt with people like you before. Well, surely you don't think I'd cheat you. Oh, oh no, of course not. The other couple didn't either. But because I was courteous enough to wait until after he'd kissed her, they forgot all about me and the agency. They were married, and the first child was six months old before they remembered to send me my fee. Well, you'll just have to take your chance. Now, tell me, what happened, Wanda? The men I was working for, where are they? Right over here, Miss Morgan. Your fiancé caught Bob as he was leaving. You have him wrapped up for safekeeping. <laughs> Joe tells me you're as good a geologist as any man in the field, Wanda. Oh, then I prove my point. Uh-huh. From now on, you can have any job you want. Wonderful. I'll start a week from Wednesday. A week from Wednesday? <laughs> what job? My honeymoon. Unless you've changed your mind. Oh, I, I haven't changed my mind, but... Uh, uh, do you call that a job? Well, I'm going to work at it. Keeping you happy... Raising a bunch of little miners? I knew it, I knew it. It'll be years before I get my fee. The curtain falls in the final act of The Gold Digger and the Miner 
Our star, Brenda Marshall, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Young man, volunteer today for enlistment in the U.S. Army or the U.S. Air Force. The Army and the Air Force wish to meet their manpower requirements with the greatest possible number of volunteers. Hundreds of jobs in a wide variety of career fields in both the Army and Air Force are open to volunteers who can qualify. If you are single and between the ages of 18 and 34, get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station today. Now, back to our star and your host, C.P. McGregor. Brenda, I'm glad that you and your husband, Bill Holden, are taking a well-earned rest from your tour among Paramount exhibitors, at least stopping long enough to come in and do another show with us. Well, C.P., Bill and I have been touring the principal city since mid-August. Of course, I've been a little homesick, too, for the children, but homesickness isn't the real reason why we returned. We've got to get the children ready for school again. Now, let's see. Of the three, Virginia is the oldest. Yes, Virginia's 12. And then there's West. West is six. And your little boy, Scotty. He should be about four. Yes, Scotty's just four. And what a toughie he is. <laughs> With an older brother and the kids in the neighborhood, he has to be, you know, to be able to hold his own. And he thinks he's old enough for school. He goes around the place in his blue jeans, fists in his hip pockets, ready to fight anyone who says he isn't. <laughs> we call him the mauler. <laughs> That's cute. Now I guess you'll be thinking about your trip soon. Yes, we'll be on our way again in a few days. It's going to be more hard work, but still a lot of fun. Oh, and by the way, I saw your picture, Iroquois Trail, and I'm going to urge our listeners to be sure and see it. I not only thought both you and George Montgomery are fine, but your producer, Edward Small, and the excellent supporting cast deserves a lot of credit. Aren't uh, United Artists releasing it? Well, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, United Artists are releasing Iroquois Trail. Uh, well, Brenda, if you and Bill happen to be listening to your radio next week, wherever you are, tune us in. I think you'll like the story we have on tap. Oh, tell me about it. Well, next week, Brenda, and ladies and gentlemen, a favorite of mine, and I'm sure of yours, Mark Stevens, joins us in a hilarious comedy titled, Peace, It's Wonderful. Mark is very fine in this comedy. The story is about a couple who seek what the wife charmingly calls the beautifully beautiful truth. Her husband, pretty much of a realist, winds up on the roof, wrapped in a sheet and talking to a goat, that he buys for the occasion of hermiting. When the wife sets fire to the house, both husband and goat receive an awakening and a much-needed soaking from the local fire department. You're right, it sounds grand, and we'll both be listening. Goodbye now, C.P. Goodbye, Brenda. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Mark Stevens returns to our microphone to star in a zany comedy, Peace, It's Wonderful. Till next week, then, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. Brenda Marshall appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script is by Bill Hampton, with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.